In today's video, we're revisiting the homemade sandblaster to see if we can get it to work without a compressor. Guys, a while back, we showed you a way to make a sandblaster for about $5, and it worked really well. And it was fantastic, but unfortunately, while the sandblaster itself was $5, it does take an air compressor, which is much more. To get a, an air compressor that works well with a sandblaster, you need a fairly large volume one, and those can be hundreds of dollars. So we did have a lot of comments saying like, well, but I don't have a compressor. This $5 tool requires a $500 tool. And there is some truth to that. To some degree, that's inescapable. You're not going to get the same results as an air compressor with anything except an air compressor. But we do think it might be possible to get similar results with something a lot more common. Here's the basic idea. We're going to see if we can use a shop vac and a metal funnel to create enough pressure to work as an at-home DIY sandblaster. Something that a lot of people have, if you have a big house, a garage, something like that, you're probably gonna have one of these lying around. This is a shop vac. It's a <laughs> vacuum that's specifically made for being used in shops. And it's a vacuum, but it doesn't usually have a bag on the inside. It's mostly just a canister. We've used this for a few experiments before, my favorite being that we filled it up with toilet paper at one point. We're gonna try to use a vacuum, and what some of you may know is that with many, if not all, shop vacs, while there's suction on one side, there's almost always a connection on the other side that blows air out. Not too bad. So definitely not the same force as an air compressor, but it is still shooting air, so that could be useful. We're gonna go ahead and attach our hose on the other end. Okay. This one screws on shop vacs where there's like a clip, you push down on it and it pulls off and then clips onto the other side. It's also good for beauty shots. <laughs> so, shop vac is creating constant pressure. It's blowing it out one side and normally that creates low pressure inside which creates suction and that's how vacuums work. However, we want to use the blowing pressure rather than the sucking pressure in this case. And one of the main differences between what a vacuum does and what a compressor does, you can overcome it just by pressing over the nozzle. It's not even very hard to do. So it's obviously less pressure, but we're going to see if we can make that pressure at least work for us well enough that we can get some sandblasting out of it. Most things on this table are currently making sense to me, except for the acrylic paint. We're not going to use the paint. What we are going to use is the bottle that the paint is in. We actually want this bottle completely empty okay. and washed out and clean. This set of funnels comes with three. I figured this doesn't direct it quite enough mm -hmm. and the smaller one will probably restrict the flow so much that there's no speed to it. So I'm just going with this medium one. This funnel opening looks fairly small, but it'll actually fit over our vacuum hose. I'm just gonna hold this on here and turn the vacuum on. We've got our funnel, air can pass through it, and it'll be shooting out the other side. What we want to do is find a way to introduce sand into the middle of the stream. Now there's something called the Venturi effect. When a fluid goes from a wider area down to a narrower area, like is happening in the funnel here, you actually create a bit of a low pressure zone as it speeds up moving through the smaller opening. And if you have an opening in the side of that narrowed portion, it creates suction right there. And that's what we're going to try and use. So what we're gonna do is drill a small hole into the side of our funnel, and hopefully that will get some suction as the vacuum is blowing past it. I think I want the handle like this, and I don't want it to be from the top, I want it in the side. So I'm going to try and drill a hole right into the side of the funnel, fairly close to where the wider part, the bell sort of part, meets the neck. To make it a little bit easier to drill into, I'm just gonna use the flat side of this file to make a flat edge. Starting off with a very small drill bit, I'm gonna go up to a slightly larger size after I get a pilot hole drilled. Now we're just going up to a slightly larger size. This drill bit is less than half of the diameter of the opening of the funnel. Now here's what we're gonna do as a little test. We're gonna take this, we're gonna fit it over the hose of the vacuum, and then we're just gonna put some sand next to it and see if that sand gets pulled in. This sand is the exact same stuff that I used last time. It's an industrial quartz. It's usually sold with the cement. It's really great because it's a pretty uniform size grain, which is nice for sandblasting, and it seems fairly rough. I think also helps a little bit. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of sand. I'm not gonna be pouring it in. I'm just gonna sort of hold it close while I have the vacuum turned on, 
and we'll see if it starts sucking the sand in. So we have our Venturi effect as the fluid air is moving from the wider area to the smaller area, it's pulling in through that side hole. It's creating a low pressure zone right where it gets narrow and that sucks in air. You have the sand near the air, it sucks that in as well. So now what we need is a way to hold all that sand in place near the opening that we drilled so you don't have to just be feeding it in with your hand. Callie has been cleaning up a little paint bottle and that's what we're going to use. Here's my plan. We want this bottle to hold our funnel or rather we want our funnel to be pushed into the bottle. So it's just sort of in the middle of there. That way we'll be able to take the cap off, add sand, and we'll be able to just sort of tip it back and forth to add more or less sand, getting close to the opening, depending on how much is in the bottle of, at one time. The best way to get this in here is gonna to be to just melt our way through. So we're gonna try heating up our funnel with a blowtorch and see if we can just kind of melt through one side and then until it's kind of out the other side a little bit. Okay. All right, so we can see that this has melted on quite nicely. In fact, it's securing itself in place just with all of the melted plastic over here. Then we're just gonna take a hot glue gun and fill in all of the gaps. There is melted plastic holding it on, but- We want a perfect seal. We want a stronger seal than that. I think I could probably peel that right off if I tried. We now have a chamber with a funnel running through it. We can put sand into the chamber and with some high pressure air flowing through, it should suck that sand in and spit it out the nozzle. Uh, I think we wanna try that and we've got several different types of glass here. There's Christmas ornaments out. One of the reasons so. we're trying glass is that's what required the least pressure to get it to show up when we were using the sandblaster before. Unfortunately, Scratch I, is pretty easy. <laughs> I don't think that the vacuum is gonna have anywhere near the pressure needed to sandblast, say, wood. That took really high pressure constant, consistent, and it would wear it away and look really cool. I just don't think we're gonna get there with the vacuum, but I do think we'll get to a point where we can customize glass, the cups, and then we're gonna try it on some of these Christmas ornaments as well. We want some designs on these, mm -hmm. so maybe let's use some electric tape mm -hmm. and some knives to come up with designs that we can put on these cups. Let's start with our Triforce mug, shall we? Yeah, yeah. I'm take this outside because it's throwing sand everywhere. You are absolutely going to want glasses for something like this. Frankly, if you've got like the more protection you can get, the better. This is gonna end up like in my hair and in my clothes and everywhere because it, it bounces off the glass. Um, but it is fairly low speed relatively going through the vacuum. I'm going to see if I can start marking into the glass my little Triforce symbol here. So I'm just gonna hold it on. I'm not taping it on or gluing it or anything. I'm literally just gonna hold it right here. <laughs> Looks like I need to do a little bit more down here at the bottom, but you can see compared to the clean glass, how much rougher that is. So I think I'm gonna fill the bottle again, second time, and just do another layer, exact same thing, going right over it. That is looking pretty good, I think. Let's move on to our next design. All right, everything <laughs> is sandblasted. Let's start peeling tape off and see what we got underneath. Here's my happy little ornament, which has had some of the paint blasted off and then some of it peeled off a little bit too, but overall. It works! This design took as much time as two and a half of his designs took, so. Already seeing the design and I love it. This is cool. It's not a perfect snowflake. I was, you know, cutting electrical tape and an X-Acto knife out of a freehand design. Yeah, if, uh, if <laughs> anyone had a vinyl plotter to do something oh, like this, yeah. like a cricket or that kind of thing, they could make much fancier designs. They would be much cleaner and smoother. No need for electrical tape. That turned out well. That's awesome. I got some ornaments that were sort of like a bubble color and then some that were a little bit more opaque because I wanted to see what the difference is, but they both turned out. What's the verdict on our funnel paint bottle sandblaster? It works, it works surprisingly well. In fact, if you just want to do some glass etching at home, yeah, you can get you know kits with like a paste or a very expensive air compressor. This took us 20 minutes. Maybe. 
less than very quick yes, to make less than five dollars if you have a shop vac and you're more likely to have a shop vac usually than you are to have an air compressor so the even quicker easier sandblaster that requires less equipment the most expensive part of this project is of course the shop vac the funnels themselves okay 350 and then sand this totally it. works guys it's amazing <laughs> you can build one of these you can make it just use it outside and because your sand is going to go everywhere, it's easier than building a blasting cabinet. If you make something with this sand blaster and you sand blast some cool glass designs, we want to see them. Put them on Instagram. Hashtag the king of random. We'll check them out. We'd love to see what you can make. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.